Hey guys, today we're covering a new case. We've got the Thermaltake CTE E600MX. This isn't a white case or a black case or a silver case. This is Hydrangea Blue, which is their 25th anniversary edition. So let's get inside the box and check it out. A little bit more subtle, I think, than it looks on the photos. It is worth saying right off the bat that you can get this in white or black if you want the traditional colours, but this is just a special edition one that I was sent, so we're looking at the blue one for this video. And there we have the Hydrangea Blue CTE E600MX. So the CTE stands for Centralised Thermal Efficiency, so they rotate the motherboard 90 degrees. All the hot air comes straight out the top, which is a really good way to do it because hot air rises, so there's no need to fight it. So moving this along, we've currently got a perforated panel on this, but can easily remove this it's got some little push pins to take that off nice dust filter on the back of there as well so you can either have an airflow option or in the big accessory box that you saw a minute ago you've got a piece of tempered glass so you can also take this fan mount out it takes up to 420 mil fans or radiators and then you can remove that and then just put in this piece of tempered glass instead so it gives you a more of a showcase look instead of an airflow optimized both of those panels have got the thermal take 25th anniversary logo now you will pay a little bit extra having both of those included in the box but i think it's a nice thing to have i wasn't really a fan of the perforated panel by the photos that i saw online but in person it's actually grown on me quite a lot so to have options i think is a really nice thing to have looking at the io that we've got on the top of the case we've got a big old chunky power button looks like there's some illumination there as well also for your ssds activity or hard drive if you're old school we've also got two usb a's these are usb 3 type c which is usb 3.2 gen 2 microphone, headphone jack, and also a reset button. Now this whole panel can just be pulled off with push pins again. There's a big dust filter on the back of there. Here is where things differ from every other case that I've looked at so far. Because of the CTE design, so the centralized thermal efficiency, we have a 90 degree rotation on the motherboard. So this is where your rear IO for your motherboard is gonna be, all your expansion slots. Then you have got some little tie points so you can have your cable management come down than out the side of the case. So all of your rear IO will be here. We've also got two fan mounts there, so you can put up to two 120 mil fans. Then going to the side of the case, we have got small tie points, so the cables that come out from the top can be cable managed all the way down. You've also got your power supply mount at the bottom there that will take up a maximum of a 220 mil power supply. Then we've got another magnetic fan filter on this side, mesh underneath for filtration. So then here you can do up to 420 mil radiator or fans again, so three 140 mils or three 120 mils. I think we best look inside the case now because all the other features are really inside there. So this comes out at 45 degrees and then slides out. Really big thick piece of glass, I'd say probably three or four mil. So inside the belly of the case we have got of course our motherboard support for up to EATX. This is an AATX motherboard but I'm just putting it in so you can see how it would fit. And then of course 90 degrees it's a little bit different a bit weird actually seeing it like this in this kind of rotation but i'm sure we'll get used to it of course support for the 24 pin will come up through any other usb header says like a usb 3 there that's right next to that will come up round through there as well another one further down then all your front panel we've got a longer one to get access to those your usb 2 headers and things like that we've got standard seven expansion ports for the rear you can do different configurations on your graphics card as well, so I'll put them on the screen for you to see. You've got a few different options you can do, so you can do the standard just connecting into the brackets. You've also got a vertical mount option that's included in the box. Then the third option you've got is what Thermaltake called their floating graphics card option. So here I've got a Gen 4 riser cable that's got some cable ties down it to keep it nice and compact. You'll plug this into your PCI graphics and that'll go down to the bottom of the case here. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see what that looks like in a PC itself. I will give it a go myself at the end as well once i've done the testing in the standard configuration to see what see what i think about it it will be quite interesting to see how it all goes together a couple of other things to mention of course you have got that fan mount in there by default with the perforator panel of course you can take that out but then we've got an additional 420 mil of space for fans down the left hand side at the back of course this is one long panel so you can put some more fans in there then the same with the bottom so another 420 mil you can remove these two screws here and the whole bracket will come out as well so you can put all your fans and things on and bring it in after the fact make it a little bit easier for maximum lengths in terms of graphics cards you can do a maximum of 415 millimeters with a radiator or 443 without there's nothing on the market that's that big so we've got no worries for that bit and then in terms of your cpu tower you've got a maximum height of 166 for a bit of context, the Not2 NHT15 is 165, so you can get away with some pretty big towers in this case. I think a white motherboard would personally fit this case better, and if you're a big fan of the blue, Thermaltake are actually going to do a full range of products in the Hydrangea Blue, so you can actually have this all match. 
So there's going to be an AIO RAM power supply and also some fans. They also have the Series 330 and also the Tower 300 in this blue colour if this is a little bit big. But I will put the range of Hydro Engine Blue products on the screen and in the description box below if you want everything to match this case. As you can see, this case can certainly take a lot of stuff, up to 14 120 millimeter fans or 9 140s. Certainly absolutely packed for cooling options here. On the back of this panel, we've got two big dust filters again. So all the air that's going to be drawn in, either from the side if you use it like a dual chamber or for where your power supply is going to be nice and fresh. Looking on the back, there's not too much to talk about. Got some space for two two and a half inch drives, also some space for two three and a half inch drives there if you want to use any older, bigger hard drives. Loads of cable tie down points so you can easily zip tie down. There's also some on the sides here which will go around to the front of the motherboard or as it's actually turned at the bottom of the motherboard in this case. Then all your 24 pins and things will come up through here. Aerofuel power supply, like I said before, up to 220 mil. You're obviously going to put that fan side out so you're going to get some fresh air in through the side. Moving these cables out the side, you've got the 420 mil fan support. You could put a pump res combo there to be fair or distribution block even there's loads of space in this case i think this is certainly going to be one more primarily for water cooling than air cooling the cables that i moved we've got the front panel connections all in one block which is great to see the hd audio and then we've also got a usb type c connector and a usb 3 type a connector here we've got the little grommet where you'll pass your hdmi or display port cables through when using the graphics card in the floating position so now we're going to get my test system in this and then we'll see how it performs. I'm going to put one fan in the back, one at the bottom, and then one on the side, and then we're going to exhaust out the top. This case is currently £199 or Scan Computers UK, so certainly not a cheap case by any stretch of the imagination. Also, doesn't come with any fans, so I'm going to add some in. Typically, cases that come with fans, you generally see about three, two in the front, one in the back. So I'm going to install three for this little test scenario. They'll also be set to 1600 RPM as well, so we've got consistent RPMs between the systems that I test or the cases that I test. And then my test platform is a 5800X3D. I'll do all my testing, tell you about the build experience, give you a conclusion, and tell you if it's gonna be worth your hard-earned money. I've got my usual test set up in here and I've run all my thermal tests and everything with the glass panel and also the perforator panel so we can see what temperature differences we're gonna get. We've got the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D and also an RTX 3080 Tough. 2 nh 12 s set to 1600 rpm i also added in some thermotech swap fans as you can see these are on the reverse blades had to change the layout from what i would usually use because obviously all the hot air is going out the top with the rotation of the motherboard but i've done as close to uh, standard configuration as i can so i've had all of these set as intakes i have one at the bottom that i've since moved just for appearance looks and just to give you a little bit of a different aesthetic for the final of the video and then i've since installed the additional bracket but I had it installed up here into the PCI slots. So like I said, I did two runs for this case. I did one with a glass panel and then one also with the perforated panel. The glass panel, we saw a maximum high of 81.8 with a room ambient of 20.9. So that's a delta of 60.2. The perforated panel maximum temperature was 80.3. Room ambient was 20.8, giving us a delta of 59.5. Putting it all into a chart to make it a little bit easier to see visually. You can see the perforated panel helps keep the temperatures lower, but it's not that much of a difference that you need to use that panel. Even with the glass one, it matches the temperatures that I saw from the Colink Observatory HF mesh that I reviewed. That was a more affordable case, but it can still match a, a mesh case, even with glass on the front in terms of performance. So just pick which one you like more aesthetic wise. It doesn't really make a difference. Now quickly touching upon the riser cable and also the floating bracket, Thermotech certainly point you in the direction of using this for this case, otherwise you wouldn't include the riser in the box. They do make them themselves as well, so it's not going to add that much of a premium, but you're going to be paying for it regardless if you use it or not. So I would just certainly use it for this case. Um, it's certainly grown on me as well. I wasn't really a fan of it to begin with, but now I've installed it and taken the time to, to get, you know, get to grips with it. I certainly do like how it looks. Also, if you're not going to be using this bracket behind, there's a couple of big holes for like your 24 pins and your USB headers and things. It is quite visible, so you can see through to the back of the case quite easily. So certainly take your time and do some cable management. I would like to see a couple of grommets there. Would make things a little bit more tidy, especially as obviously you've got gravity. So any cables that come loose will just fall down and be quite visible if you don't have your graphics card in the way to cover it up. A very straightforward building experience with the case as a whole. I've also got some b-roll that i'll put over of me installing the floating bracket and putting it together for anyone that's wondering about that i built my system with it all stood up which i personally wouldn't recommend for beginners especially with the motherboard rotation but thankfully thermal take i've got the little center nub on the standoff so you can easily find the positioning the longest part of the build was just installing the fans and deciding how i wanted them 
The fewer cables that you can get away with, I think the better as well, because there's quite a lot of open holes. I'm not too sure about the black accents too in an otherwise all white case. It does make it easier to choose either black or white, or if you go for a bit of a panda theme, it doesn't push you one way to go all black or all white. But as the expansion covers and the cables are the only black parts, I think it does stand out a little bit, especially if you're gonna use a white motherboard. A couple of little minor details, the IO shield doesn't go right to the top of the case, so don't put your IO shield in if you're still using one like that first thinking that it's going to go to the top because it won't you'll just leave yourself a nice little mark there which i've done but uh that was my bad for thinking that it goes right to the top of the case then also the usb headers for the usb 3 and the usb c are quite stiff but that's just those cables because they carry a lot of data they're quite thick just in general so just be careful with those because obviously you don't want to damage them don't bend them too tight a couple of little minor things but for those that like attention to detail i thought i'd add them in Overall though, this is a great case with a lot of options. You can do something simple yet effective like I've done here, or you can go for a high-end custom loop system. It does support everything like that without any problems. Good thermal performance and considering it comes with a Gen 4 riser cable and also the floating GPU bracket, a fairly reasonable price as well. So thank you all for watching. If you want any more questions, please leave them in the comments box below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'll leave the links for this in the description box if you want to pick one up. Big thank you to Thermotech for sending this out for me to look at. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe and dig the bonus if you miss a future one. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.